We're shaking bacon. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the Harvard University carnivore diet study that was just published a couple weeks ago. And we're going to discuss a little bit about, more specifically, the benefits people had in relation to diabetes. Diabetes is a major issue in North America, and it's becoming a major issue all over the world. It's worth looking further into this information. Before we get into that, uh, we'll do a brief explanation about what the carnivore diet is. It's basically just eating meat. Simple as that. There's no vegetables, there's no fruit, there's no nuts, there's nothing but meat. Some people include dairy in this, uh, some people don't because they find they don't feel as good with dairy in their diet, but nonetheless, it's just meat products. So we're talking beef, lamb, chicken, seafood. So uh, that's the limitations of the diet. Some people do more strict versions of it called the lion diet. That's what I've been doing with this four month challenge. I started in September, I'm doing till the end of December, and I'll be doing another version of it come January because it's going really well and I'm enjoying it. I feel good when I eat this way. As far as how I've been feeling, my sleep has been really good. It's been good for the last three or four weeks now. I think my body's finally regulated nicely. I found it's really important that I get about four pounds of meat a day, though it's gonna have an impact on my weight loss, which I don't mind. I get much better quality sleep if I have my four pounds a day. I've also noticed that if I eat closer to bedtime, say an hour before, maybe two hours before, I sleep warmer at night. I don't need my sheet and two layers of my wool blanket at night because I love a cold room and I love just being under the sheets, breathing cold air. But at the same time, I eat before I go to sleep and I'm just warm all night long. I'm running warm and I have just the sheet on me and maybe a blanket over my legs. So I've noticed this correlation enough to know that there's definitely an impact of eating later. Um, I never noticed that whenever I have carbohydrates before bed or junk food before, before bed, but I have noticed it having say a pound of ground beef or a steak before bed. Yeah, I've been sleeping well, my energy's been great, my joints feel great, I notice a big difference in the little things, like when I run upstairs, I can run upstairs now, right? Before I'd walk upstairs and I'd feel the weight of each step. And sometimes I could walk a little fast, but not really too fast. Now I can run upstairs. Uh, all these little things, when I walk, it's just a looser walk. When I, I just walk and there's no stiffness in my joints, it's uh, really beneficial. So on top of all the blood work I've been getting done with this challenge, I started this four month challenge with blood work and I'm gonna end it with blood work. I'm hopefully gonna get some blood work done later this week since uh, I'm about two and a half, almost three months into this diet. It'll be really nice to see what my blood work reading is three months into this with uh, the exercise I've been doing because I've been doing 15 minutes of circuit training, intense weight training. So I'll go right from deadlifts to shoulder press and then from shoulder press to um, traps or bicep curls or maybe another leg exercise. And then I just keep doing that for the 15 minutes. I finish one exercise and I go right to the next. I try and keep it intense. I'm not going to break world records because I have a history of back pain and I had a heart attack a number of years ago. So I'm. Um, that being said, we'll get into uh, this video on the carnivore study and why this is relevant to people with diabetes. I was pre-diabetic myself. I may have even been diabetic at one point. When it comes to diabetes, if you're overweight, even 20, 30 pounds, you have an insulin problem. Your body's not allowing you to access that 15 or 20 pounds of weight, stored fat. So you don't necessarily have diabetes. You're probably not even really pre-diabetic on paper. Your body's not allowing you to get to that fat as fuel. And that's the beginning of going down that road. And along with diabetes comes the weight gain. And along with the weight gain comes a slew of other health problems. And that's where it gets really serious. And these things happen so slowly over years that typically people don't really notice that um, this is a, you know, it's kind of like you're the frog in the in the increasingly hot water and you don't notice how bad it is until one day you're in the boiling water. And that happens to a lot of us and we get our wake up call or whatever it might be for one person or another. Maybe just it's the way their pants fit or maybe it's because they finally realize they can't do simple things or maybe they just don't feel good or maybe they've had a serious health scare. It's one of the first issues people have that lead to other health problems, metabolic syndrome and all sorts of other problems that come along with this weight gain. We need to access our fat stores. When we look at this study, let's look at this now, some of the numbers. 
So these are people that were doing this diet for more than six months. And at the bottom of results, in the last section, it says, participants with diabetes reported benefits including reduction in BMI, body mass index, A1C, and diabetes medication use. 84 to 100% of the people had a reduction in their medication use for diabetes. So here's some key facts from the World Health Organization on diabetes. The number of people with diabetes rose from 108 million in 1980 to 422 million in 2014. Prevalence has been rising more rapidly in low and middle income countries than in high income countries. Diabetes is a major cause of blindness, kidney failure, heart attacks, stroke, and lower limb amputation. Between 2000 and 2016, there was a 5% increase in premature mortality from diabetes. In 2019, diabetes was the ninth leading cause of death with an estimated 1.5 million deaths directly caused by diabetes. A healthy diet, regular physical activity, maintaining a normal body weight, and avoiding tobacco are ways to prevent or delay the onset of type 2 diabetes. Diabetes can be treated and its consequences avoided or delayed with diet, physical activity, medication, and regular screening and treatment for complications. So this is one of those conditions that is completely preventable for most people, especially younger people. A simple way to put this is our body just can't process sugar that well anymore. Think of it as like a sensitivity or an allergy. So at that point, you know, you have to cut that out. There's no, there's no way to go around it. Lots of people can cut it down, but some people it's so far gone, they have to go more extreme and cut it out. Type two diabetes, formerly called non-insulin dependent or adult onset. We don't call it adult onset anymore because it's happening in children. Children are now becoming diabetic. So it doesn't make sense to call it adult onset diabetes anymore. More than 95% of people with diabetes have type two diabetes. This type of diabetes is largely the result of excess body weight and physical inactivity. The disease may be diagnosed several years after onset, after complications have already arisen. Like I said, if you're 20, 30 pounds overweight, not much, you're still a relatively skinny person, or maybe you know, you're skinny, but you got some folds on you, right? You have a higher body fat percentage than you should. And what happens is your body just doesn't process sugar and you're not able to access that fat store as fuel. So we need to turn that around. To help prevent type two diabetes and its complications, people should. Okay, look how far diet is down the list. Achieve and maintain a healthy body weight. It's a challenge for over 50 to 60% of the population of North America. Eat a healthy diet, avoiding sugar and saturated fats. So what's a healthy diet? This carnivore study is proof of that. It's something that has confused the doctors that did the study and they're scratching their heads. They're baffled at how this has had such, such good results, especially with people with diabetes. 84 to 100% of the people with diabetes lessen their medication. That's huge. And then you do one of the diets that they give you where uh, the doctor will give you a diabetic diet. It's got tons of carbs and sugar in it. Natural sugars, but still sugar. Carbohydrates are full of sugar. Vegetables are full of sugar. So eating a healthy diet should be first and foremost on the list because people can turn their diabetes around just by managing their diet. When we go back to uh, the carnivore study, when a way of eating has a positive impact it's from 84 to 100% of the participants in the study of over 2,000 people. It's worth paying attention to. As important as exercise is, we can have a dramatic effect taking people off their medications and getting them out of the woods with their issues of health in regards to diabetes, just with a carnivore diet before they start exercising. So for example, I lost 80 pounds before I decided, okay, now it's time to exercise. Because at a certain weight, it's not that it's dangerous, but it's a little riskier. And I don't necessarily mean when it comes to uh, uh, cardiovascular issues or uh, issues with uh, heart disease or anything like that. But I'm talking more about uh, risk of injury. You know, uh, being a big guy and doing some aggressive exercises is just a recipe for disaster. So once I got the weight to a more manageable level, that's when I turned around and I started introducing the exercise and I started this challenge. So I've been doing carnivore all year and uh, since the very beginning of the year. It wasn't a New Year's resolution, it just coincidentally happened that way. And I've been doing the lion diet since September. So now we're near the end of November. And 
everything's going well. So there's different ways, as I discussed in another video, to lower the insulin in your body. And I go into more depth about how you can do that, but we wanna just look into that because the zero carb diet is probably the first easiest thing to do. Intermittent fasting, once you're fat adapted, intermittent fasting is very easy. It's very easy to do. So if you wanted, you could adopt that, but you don't need to. Um, the whole point of that is longer windows of time, so uh, between meals, so your insulin naturally goes down and then you can access your fat as fuel. Exercise is another way to access your fat as fuel because you're using your glycogon as fuel. And then after that, you're using your blood sugar. And then after that, you're getting into your fat and lean mass as fuel. So we wanna stop before we get into the lean mass, but do it long enough so that we can burn through the first three fuels. And then after that, if you wanted, another way is calorie restriction, but I'm not a big fan of that because when you have a clean diet, you can have a lot of food in your diet and it's still not gonna have too much of an impact on your blood sugar because when you have carbohydrates, your blood sugar spikes. When you have protein, like say a steak, your blood sugar goes up, but it doesn't spike so much. It's more like a, a big hill. And then if you have just fat, it barely has an impact on your blood glucose levels. So that's why a carnivore diet gives almost immediate results to people who are diabetic. Now this should all be done supervised by their doctors, but it's something that they should really look into and maybe look into educating their doctors on this. So having a reputable university like Harvard doing a carnivore study is a good direction to go in. And now a doctor is still gonna say they don't know the long-term results of doing a carnivore study. But as I mentioned before, the road those people are going down to begin with isn't that good either. So that's a guaranteed bad road versus something that is gonna be beneficial and help you with all your um, numbers on a blood panel. Then what's the problem? It's, it's getting you out of the woods really fast. And you can start with diet. Diet is an affordable thing to start with. It's not an expensive way of eating when you do a zero carb diet. So uh, it can work out to be just a few dollars a day. And by a few dollars, I mean as low as six to $15 a day. And that's if you just get ground beef on sale. You know, if you have three pounds of ground beef or two pounds of ground beef at $3 a pound, it's not an expensive diet. You put some nice steaks in there every now and then, should you want to, you're, you're welcome to do that. So I'm going to do another video on another aspect of this uh, study coming up, and it'll really focus on uh, different aspects. I'm gonna do a, a, maybe a series of these videos on the Harvard University study, break down different benefits that people got from it and how important. The so I hope you enjoyed this video. It was fun uh, going over this information because it's so upbuilding. I mean, it's, it's something that can literally change people's lives almost effortlessly. It's tough to get rid of the sugar addiction, but once you're over that hump, it's pretty manageable. It's very manageable actually. So, and it doesn't take long to get there. So if you like this video, please subscribe. I'd like to uh, get your feedback. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them. Uh, give it a thumbs up or uh, hit the little bell notification if it's there so you can get alerts when uh, my videos post. I normally keep my videos pretty short between 10 to 15 minutes tops, usually around 12 tops. And this one might be a little bit longer though. And I don't want them to eat into your day too much. So this way you can catch up on these uh, videos. I put them out every Thursday morning and every Sunday morning. So take care of yourselves.